what's up and welcome back. We are in a series all about creativity and creativity is imagining what you can do because you are made in the image of God. So get this, God made you and I and you and you to be like him. And one of the things that we get to do is show his love to others. There's so many different ways that we can do that. Now, I have a game, have a quick challenge for two of our lab assistants. Let me go ahead and call them to the floor. Lab assistants, ah, okay. All right, there, there, all right. So now, what their challenge is, they're gonna have an object. And they're gonna have to imagine that object being used for different things other than what the object is made for. Like this, it's a bowling pin, but I can imagine that it's a guitar, right? Or I can imagine that it is a baseball bat. Or I can imagine that it is gone. Okay, so we have them in place and we are gonna give the first one 30 seconds to come up with as many items as they can. And then the second one will come up with as many items as they can and we will see who comes up with the most items. And if you can guess those, all right? So let's check that out in three, two, one, go! Give it up for him, come on. All right, who knew they could be so creative with all those ideas? But I would be willing to bet that you guys sitting right where you are probably had a lot more ideas than they did. It's so cool to be creative. And you know what, let's give them one more hand. Okay, that's enough. Oh, it's almost time for the Bible story. So let's jump into some praise and worship and I'll see you guys in a second. It's about to get creative. pretty good. 
Oh, hey kids, I, I didn't see you guys there. I was just busy being creative, but anyway. Let's check out today's memory verse found in Psalms 145 verse three. And it says, Lord, you are great. You are worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Now, let's stay to our feet and let's say it all together. So grab your mom, your dad, your sister, or your brother, and let's say it together. Lord, you are great. You are worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Awesome job, Kids Life. And welcome back. So today we have an amazing story about a woman named Miss Paula. I'm gonna show you so many creative ways. No, 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 no. It's about a woman named Esther. Can we get lab security? Oh, okay, all right. So this story is about how God used creativity in an unexpected way. So just, just check it out. I gotta, Miss Paula, what in the world was that? The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story inspired by the book of Esther. Esther was the queen of Persia. Wait, what? Queen? Esther didn't become queen in the usual way. See, her father wasn't a king, and she wasn't from a noble family. It's just me and cousin Mordecai. In fact, Esther was Jewish. Many of God's people had been captured and brought to Babylon when their home, Judah, was conquered. Then Babylon was taken over by Persia. So Esther grew up in a land that wasn't her own. When Esther's parents died, her cousin Mordecai raised her as his very own daughter. Always remember what our scriptures say. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength. One day, a new king named Xerxes came to power in Persia. He was so impulsive that he actually fired his queen, Vashti, simply for refusing to show up at a wild party. She will never see me again. When Xerxes had finally calmed down, he had realized he now had no queen. I have no queen. He would have to find a new one. I must find a new one. So the king decided to hold a contest. He ordered his officials to gather the most beautiful young women in the land and put them through an entire year of beauty treatments. Esther was one of those girls chosen. Cousin Mordecai, what do I do? Don't tell anyone you're from a Jewish family. I have chosen my new queen. <clears throat> Drum roll. My new queen is Esther. Mm-hmm. Me? Assume the queenly royal crown. I might have to resize it. Just as Xerxes had so impulsively switched queens, he also promoted a royal official named Haman, higher than all of the other nobles in the kingdom. Bow to me, you fools. Haman was delighted when all of the officials outside the palace bowed low before him. When he discovered that Mordecai refused to bow, he was enraged. You have to bow. Somebody make him bow. Haman was so angry. He made a plan to destroy not only Mordecai, but all the Jews in the land. He laid it out for the king. Your majesty, these Jews live differently than everyone else. They don't obey your laws. Fiddlesticks, that's just wrong. Precisely. Give the order to destroy them. Consider it done. Xerxes agreed to the terrible decree. Messengers took the letter all over the kingdom. Hear ye, hear ye. On the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, all Jews are to be killed. Hear ye, hear ye. When Mordecai and the other Jews discovered the horrible news, they dressed in rough clothing and wept bitterly. 
Mordecai sent a message to Esther in the palace, telling her what Haman had done. You must ask the king to save our people. Esther was devastated. She sent a response to her cousin. No one can come before the king unless he sends for them. If I do it, I'll die, unless he reaches out his gold scepter to me. Mordecai sent his answer right back. You may not escape, even though you're queen. Who knows? It's possible that you became queen for just a time like this. He's right. Here, tell this to Mordecai. Gather all the Jews. Don't eat anything for three days. I and my servants will fast too. Then I'll go to the king. Esther faced an impossible dilemma, but she took three days to prepare her heart and her mind. Bring my most beautiful royal robes. Heart racing, Esther entered the throne room. Across the long hall, she saw the king seated high on the throne. Breathless, she waited for him to see her. Please, please, please. The king looked up, his dark eyes locked on Esther's face. And then he smiled. He reached out his golden scepter. Thank God. What is it, Queen Esther? I'll give you anything, up to half my kingdom. Esther could have made her request right away, but she knew she would have a better chance if she made the king curious. King Xerxes, if it pleases you, come to a feast I've prepared today. Oh, and bring Haman. Consider it done. Esther created an elaborate feast for the king and his number two official. <laughs> Look at me, you peasants, invited to the queen's banquet. At the meal, King Xerxes once again tried to discover what Esther wanted. I'll give you anything, up to half my kingdom. Once again, Esther held her ground and waited for the perfect moment. I'd like you and Haman to come to another feast tomorrow. Then I'll answer your question. The king agreed, and Haman spent the whole evening bragging to all of his friends. You guys, the queen thinks I am the bum. <laughs> but the second feast was a different story. As before, Esther prepared an incredible meal. Both Haman and the king were quick to dig in. What do you want me to do for you? I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Esther took a deep breath. Something told her this was the right moment. Your majesty, let me live. Please spare my people. We have been sold to be destroyed. Haman paled and choked on his fillet, but the king's face flushed red with rage. Who is the man who has dared to do such a thing? Esther turned her gaze on Haman. Haman is the one. In a panic, Haman threw himself at the queen. Totally didn't mean it. Please, please, please let me live. You dare attack the queen? Take him away. That very night, Haman was killed, and the king created a new order that would allow the Jews to be saved. We will celebrate this day with great joy. God had given Esther a surprising position in a foreign nation, and when the time was right, she would use all she had been given to save her people. So that was really cool. God had a plan for Esther the whole time. He used her in a way that even though it was so far from home, he used her to save the people. At the right time, she used her creativity to convince the king to help her people. God had a special purpose for Esther. And the awesome thing, uh, that, the awesome feeling that I get when I hear that story, when I see that story, is that she's not the only one that God has a purpose for. God has a purpose for you. Maybe you've never heard that before, and I'm so happy to maybe be the first person to tell you that. Maybe your mom and dad's already told you that, but it's so true. God has a purpose for you. Now, you may not know what that is, but I'll tell you how you can find out in a second. God had a purpose for Jesus his one and only son. He sent Jesus here to save you and to save me so that we can know a life not apart from God, but close to God. So that we can know a life that was all about being a part of God's family. And, and so maybe you're here today and, and you've never made a decision to be a part of God's family. Maybe you never even knew what Jesus did for you. Well, today I wanna pray with you. 
I'm gonna say a prayer and I want you to repeat after me. And in that prayer, we are making a decision to be a part of God's family, to follow Jesus. Because in this prayer, we're simply saying that Jesus, we believe that you came to this earth, that you died on the cross and that you rose again so that we could be a part of God's family. And God's word says that all we have to do is to believe it in our heart and then say it with our mouth. And we're gonna do both of those things with this prayer. So would you mind repeating after me? God, thank you for your love. I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. I believe that he rose again so that I could be a part of your family. Thank you for forgiving me and thank you for loving me. I choose to follow Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Get this, if this was your first time praying that prayer, I am so proud of you. You are now a part of God's family. And it's so cool because we have uh, things, resources that we wanna give you to help you in the decision you just made. All you gotta do is stay connected to the Life Kids because each and every week we're posting cool tips and tools on how to follow Jesus every Wednesday. Now get this, maybe you, you already made a decision to follow Jesus and you're wondering what is your purpose? Well. A cool way to figure out what your purpose is, is to look at the gifts that you have. Maybe you have the gift of making friends. Well, you go to school or you start a new team and you show up and you see that there's someone sitting by themselves. Your purpose in that moment is to go over and be a friend. Your gifts help you with your purpose. I wanna say that again. Your gifts help you with your purpose. And everyone has a purpose. You know why? Because God created you with a purpose. So let's take a few minutes and talk more about your purpose and think of ways that we can use our gifts to walk out our purpose, like Esther in our Imagineer groups. I've had such an awesome time with you guys today. I'll see you next time.